into you, Lord. Father, we step deep into you tonight. We literally, as we come back into this room tonight, we bring all your glory. We bring everything that we've experienced in this time of soaking back in with us so that it can affect our families, so it can affect our schools, it can affect our cities, it can affect our, affect our workplaces, Lord. It's just being in you, Lord. It's understanding that we are clothed in you, in the fullness of Yahweh. We are clothed in the fullness of Yahweh, the fullness of all of our God. Father, tonight I pray that you'll bring revelation regarding glory. Father, bring revelation regarding that which the enemy could have stolen, the enemy could have taken from us. Father, the visible expression of your presence. Pray, Father, that you will just continually open us up, pour into us revelation, knowledge, insight, a greater dimension of all of what you have for us, sons and daughters, Lord. I thank you for the angel. The angel said it's in our midst. I thank you, Father. We welcome them. We welcome everyone, Father. We also thank you for their mandate, their sent form, that we are the sons of the Most High that mandates them into position. Thank you, Father, that we can acknowledge the angelic realm. Thank you that we can, as the legislators of the kingdom of heaven to earth, welcome every living creature that you have made available to our back and call to bring the blueprints to the earth. Thank you, Father, for wisdom and insight. I thank you for every son and daughter that we will begin to understand these things and walk deep in it, Lord. That we will begin to see in new levels, new dimensions, and we will know all that we see in that revelation of what it is it's showing us. Father, we love you, we praise you, we glorify you, and we thank you for who we are in you. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 I hope you guys had a good time on Saturday. Yes. I tried to put everything on YouTube already. There, most of it's there. I just uh, lost the last, uh, I think, half an hour or 40 minutes of the second session. So I got all the questions except one last question was your sister's question. Otherwise, I got all the other questions and I didn't get, I didn't get uh, all the others. But I do believe that... Um, yeah, the Apostle Johnny and his team got all of us, so if you do want to get the sessions, you're welcome to get it from them. They have everything. Tonight, so we're going back to uh, the crowns. We're doing the crown of glory. And I want to remind you, I want to remind you to constantly go back to some of these teachings so that you engage with it all the time. Because uh, as we get on with stuff, you'll forget about the other things I taught on. That's why we're going to try and do these uh, questions and answer sessions as often as possible. Not often, often, but at least every two to three months. Just so that we can constantly go back to what we were taught. Because, you know, I, I am in a, in a fortunate position where I teach this stuff all the time. So I'm constantly busy with it, constantly preparing a message, constantly engaging with what I need to present to you. Right. So it's something that I'm continuously doing. But if you're not continuously in it, then you're not, you're going to forget about the stuff that we've begun with. And it's really the foundation. Like I always say, this is one massive message. Yeah. All right. Huh? You know, so I'm giving you parts of something that will carry on. I mean, in New Orleans, it's already been going on for almost two years. Mm -hmm. And if you're there, if you've been there before, you'll understand that the revelation coming out there is deep. All right. And it's intense, but it's still the same stuff. All right. But it still carries, but goes back to dividing soul and spirit. Amen. So for us to have an understanding of what it means to, to carry the crown of glory and also what it means to lose it, mm. it's really important. But in all of this revelation, if I just step back a couple of sessions, if I just go back to a couple of previous revelations the Father was sharing, then I will understand what I can do. Because with sight, all things are possible. All right. Okay. Amen. Because the more I see, the more I know what to do. 
because the Father shows us all kinds of things. I'm not in that place where I see a vision and I don't know what it means anymore. All right. Because kind of what's the point, right? What's the point? You know, you see something phenomenal, but you have no idea what it means. It brings a lot of confusion and frustration. And so the idea is really to expand your vision as much as you possibly can. That's why we're continuously engaging. Um, it's very important to do that. I, uh, I was speaking to your wife the other day, and, and she said something really interesting. I said, well, you have to, on Saturday, you have to go, I think it was Saturday, you have to go back into the previous experience. Mm -hmm. And she made a statement and she said, well, that's difficult because I'm always experiencing something new. Yeah. That's kind of the key. Yeah. You, know, that you have experienced so many things that when you take that whole entire picture into the spirit realm, everything just makes sense. Good. But it's because the process of going in all the time to have the ability to stand back within the spirit and to see everything as a big picture. Good. Because obviously it's not it's as real as this. Yeah. Except I don't travel by car, I don't talk by phone or face to face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything I, I, if I want to go somewhere, I travel by thought. All right. Thought speed. And how fast that is? Thanks. It's very fast. Yeah. And I, I, if I want to speak to someone that's on the, at the end of, of the kingdom of heaven, I can just telepathically know exactly what they're thinking, what they're saying. Yeah. Wow. Because that's kind of what we were supposed to walk in on the earth, but sin turned that away from us, right? That's right. It doesn't make anything that we're experiencing a perversion, right? You guys okay? Right. All right. Like cell phones, it's not a perversion, mm -hmm. it's just a diversion. Diversion. <laughs> right? It's not the 100% the, the truth. Because I don't really have to call my mother, because she passed away, but I wouldn't really have to call my mother if she's in Johannesburg and I'm in Cape Town, I would just be able to know what she's thinking and literally talk to her like that, telepathically. Yes, yes. Because that's what we can do in the spirit. That's what Satanists do. Yeah. Did you know that? Satanists, they can read each other's minds, one of the things they do, but they also have meetings in the air. It's called astro traveling. Mm. All right. So where did they get the stuff from? They can only pervert it. Yeah. And it was we've believed for so many years that Satan can't read our minds. He can. All right. But they have authority over this realm and he's been kicked out. Right? Amen. Okay. When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Mm. When the Christ in you begins to manifest around you and you manifest God in the world around you as a king, then the crown of glory is manifested and revealed to the spirit world. See, I need you to understand something, that glory and this crown that you carry is something that's visibly seen on you. Woo. And when we start talking about glory, I need you to understand something, that unless you've seen it with your physical eyes, you haven't seen it yet. Right. Because glory is something you can see. Mm. It's not something you feel. You can feel His presence, but again, in the same breath, we begin to understand that when I feel His presence, it's not so much that He's yet in His fullness. I remind you that God's omnipresent, right? Yes. He can't go anywhere. So when I start feeling His presence, it's not because He comes. Right. It's because yeah. I become aware of who He is and where He is. Yes. So it's not so much God doing anything as what it is me becoming aware. So I'm really worshipping Him and I start feeling His presence as if He's come down. Come on now. But He doesn't come down. Right. Because He doesn't never go anywhere. But I begin to grow in, in not just feeling His presence, but engaging His presence and then walk with it all day long. But when I, when I go into the mountain of the Lord, now, if you've been in the kingdom of heaven, the golden mountain is uh, a couple of, I don't know how to say it in meters, or, or, or I would say maybe a, a mile or so away from the mountain of the Lord. And what happens is just what I've, what I've believed is what happened, and then I've heard someone say something similar, but as the Father comes out of the mountain of the Lord, that's where His, his entire presence is. That's where His 
physical existence is. That's where he, he kind of spends most of his time. That's his private domain. Right. Whenever he comes out of the mountain of the Lord, the glory that falls from him has created a mountain of gold. All right. That's the same dust that we were created out of. Out of the dust of the earth. That's the same dust. That's why we need to begin to understand that when we step into his presence and we take on his glory, just like Jesus said to him, glorify me like I glorify you. Yeah. We have to begin to understand his desire for us to take on his glory so that when I return my, my soul or my body into the earth, into my body, my soul or my spirit, it, back into the earth, into my physical body, after the night watch, I'm going to go into that sometime. Um, then I bring back the fullness of that glory that I had when I was sitting with him face to face. That's something you carry that goes beyond the anointing, goes beyond his presence. <laughs> you guys okay? But of course the enemy can take that away from you. As quick as possible, because that's the main thing he will do, because he hates that in the earth. Matter of fact, he will do everything in his power to prevent a son of God to go into that realm and bring that glory back. Matter of fact, he will do everything in his power to keep that glory out of a meeting. Now I know it's, it sounds really phenomenal and powerful when we start healing the sick and start raising the dead and we start doing phenomenal miracles and the supernatural appears in front of us. We begin to believe that that's the fullness of God's glory. When you can't stand in His presence. No, it's because, let me tell you something, your physical body cannot, cannot, cannot take the full presence of Yahweh. You will literally die. Yeah. That's why we shake and we fall. Yeah. And the idea has always been that I go into the kingdom of heaven with my spirit and I train my soul to come with. But my soul does not understand or perceive this stuff. So as my soul is trained and equipped, eventually it will start going with my spirit into the kingdom of heaven. That's the night watch. So when I'm sleeping, I start meditating on the things of God as I fall asleep so that I can take my soul and my, my spirit into the kingdom of heaven while my body is at rest. All right. That's where I go and walk with the Father and I get to do my Father's business in its full extent. That's when I wake up in the morning full of His glory. Yeah. Because I brought that back from the kingdom of heaven. Now most of us can't do that. This is why Jesus said to His disciples, um, after He said to them, I'm going to the mountain to pray, pray with me. And He came back and they were sleeping. He wasn't angry at them because they were sleeping. He was angry with them because they had, he, they had no idea what it means to go into the mountain of the Lord. What it yeah. means to go into the night watch. Yeah. So he was in the kingdom of heaven waiting for his disciples to walk in there with him, but they were not there. Mm. So it's very easy for the enemy to steal the crown of glory. Matter of fact, between the enemy and sin, that crown can be taken off daily. All right. yeah. Now I need you to understand that it's not something that is supposed to bring fear on us, but in the same breath, it's something that I want to carry in the Spirit. It's a crown that I want to walk with. I want to walk with the fullness of the glory of Yahweh over and on me, because that is what I'm called to do. Right. As a son of the Most High, I'm called to walk in that fullness. And I also have to begin to understand what the possibilities are when I walk in that presence. Because I, if you understand, the darkness can't exist in this presence. All right. Any form of demonic entity has to flee. Yes. Matter of fact, it cannot be near you when you walk in that glory. Now imagine if, if I have it, and you have it, and you have it, and everyone in this room have it, and we have a city that, of, of people that has that, Come that on. carries that everywhere they go. That's why he said that wherever you put your foot, that place belongs to you. Yeah. Because yeah. you carry my glory. It is a crown on your head, and the enemy cannot stand where you are. Mm. That's why I no longer cast out demons. When I put my foot down, they run. Yeah. But I have cast out demons, even recently. Matter of fact, I, remember I was preaching in a church a couple of weeks ago and I had to stop 
mid service to cast out a religious demon. Mm. And I saw it in the spirit, massive, just staring at me. And I wasn't looking at anyone particular, it wasn't out of a man, it was a, a body that believed certain things. Yep. Not, it was a full on charismatic, born again, wonderful, beautiful, powerful church with a beautiful pastor, powerful man of God. I love it, it had nothing to do with him. He stared into that thing every time he preaches himself. But I could not carry on with the message the Lord has given me till I dealt with it. Yeah. And it included the spirit of, of death and dumbness. Wow. Mm. And after I did that, because it was nasty. I mean, if you've ever been in a service where someone stops the service to cast out a demon, it's nasty. You know? it's, it's like, whoa, what just happened? <laughs> but it changed the atmosphere. Yeah. And of course, it's a, it almost feels like I'm slapping somebody. But I just could not carry on looking that thing in the face. So we need to begin to understand that his desire is for us to walk in the fullness of his glory. God's glory is the external manifestation of his being. Which means I can clothe myself through the blood and through sonship in that glory. God's glory is something that appears. In Exodus it says, And it came to pass as Aaron spoke unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that uh, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Yahweh appeared in the cloud. <laughs> now that was a physical sight that you could see. Yeah. I mean, if you think about the Israelites, they had the most ridiculous miracles. Yeah. I mean, just, it's crazy. Like the whole entire nation walked through the Dead Sea. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely just, and then for 40 years they had manna yeah. that just appeared in the mornings that they could eat for the whole day. Yeah. 40 years. Shoot. They had a cloud, in day, a, 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 a cloud of fire at, at night. Yeah, keep them warm. Cloud of shade during the day. Keep what more can you possibly want? Meat, bread, they had everything. And it was all supplied supernaturally. Amen. As the glory Ooh. led them. Thank you. Thank you. So if we, through the blood of Yeshua, has a completely different dimension of that to our beck and call, what is the possibility to a generation, a, a nation, a people that walks clothed in His glory? Mm where you could visibly see it in and on people. Yeah, yeah. It is revealed in Isaiah 40 verse 5, it says, And the glory of Yahweh shall be revealed, and all the flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. See, this is partly where the oracle of God comes in, being in that place in your walk with Yahweh, that you have literally become His voice. And of course, I said it before, it's impossible to become an oracle of Yahweh unless you have become 100% one with Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I have shared my testimony where I become one with Him, but now there's another aspect to becoming one with Him. Yeah. It is where my mind goes into the spirit realm with my spirit. That's my soul, will, mind, and emotion. goes yeah. in with my spirit, and we, as we together become one with Yahweh. And of course, then there'll be another dimension, and I hope it's soon, where my body, soul, and spirit will go into the kingdom of heaven, and my entire being will become one with Him. Yeah. Woo. And I, I, you know, that's not even the focus. The focus is always intimacy. Yeah. All right. Building on relationship, loving, worshiping, glorifying, magnifying, soaking, eating of Him, drinking of Him, soaking in His Word, eating of His Word, going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into Him. You know, I have a friend who stayed in Texas, and uh, he was a Baptist, not just the other day. And uh, he listened, started listening to some of my teachings. I introduced him to some of my mentors, and uh, he phones me almost every day. And he always phones me to tell me about a testimony, how he's going deeper and deeper and deeper, and how he's seeing more. And now, nowadays, he's just seeing angels all over the place, and, and it's just lights all over the place. And he would say to his wife, did you see that light? I saw a light on top of that car. And she's like, no, I didn't see a light. 
And they would speak to someone else, did you see a light? I saw a light. And he's like, no, I didn't see the light. But he's beginning to see. There's growth just taking place every day. And he's no longer Baptist. All right. <laughs> he's baptized into something completely else. else. Yes. And of course, his life has changed. I look at him and I see him grow every day. I see the glory on him yes. in the spirit realm. Because there's extreme desire to push in. And he's the one of them that says to me, I never knew it would be such hard work. Mm. And if I say Christianity and hard work in the same sentence, most of us say, well, that can't be God. <laughs> but I, don't know, I don't understand how we can even think that, like that. But you know, the brother of Yeshua says, well, faith without works is dead. Yeah. There's just so much thing that there's so much that I have to do. In, in the same breath, there's so much that I don't have to do. That's right. I mean, I don't have to work for my salvation. I don't have to work at being more righteous. Yeah. But if I want all that He has for me, so if I want to walk in a deeper realm, if I want to go deeper with Him, I have to study the Word. How many of you understand? That takes work. It takes work. I can't just study the, the Bible and think it's not going to be work. Any form of study, the flesh will reject it. Matter of fact, the only one in my being that wants to do this is my spirit. Yeah. Right. Only my soul thinking it's too much work. My body thinking, oh, you're doing this at 5 o'clock in the morning, dude. You're crazy. I want to sleep. I'm not taking anything in. So there's a constant fight. Yeah, work. But it's work against it. I have to work. That's why I have to subject yeah. my, my soul and my body to my spirit Here. that's in Christ. Amen. It's a continuous work. Now in the same breath, I need to understand that it's not work. Yeah. It sounds like work, and in essence it's a work, but my spirit's in charge, and my spirit can't wait to do this. Mm -hmm. My spirit being in charge can't wait to lead my soul into a new place. Can't wait to lead my body into a new place. And my body and my soul is slowly but surely beginning to adapt. Absolutely. Because as much as my spirit's in the glory, my soul is seeing the glory. My body is experiencing the healing in its, uh, that, that takes place daily and is experiencing and seeing the glory. And it naturally wants more. It naturally wants more of what the Father is pouring into my spirit. Exciting, isn't it? Amen. There's also a more a fun, a fundamental sense in which God ha has glory prior to an external manifestation. I just want to explain this to you. Let's, let's read ex Exodus. And he said, show me, I pray you, uh, thy, I pray thee thy glory. And he said, I will make uh, all my goodness pass by you and I will proclaim the name of Yahweh before you and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. And Yahweh said, Behold, there is a place by me and thou shalt stand upon the rock and it shall come to pass, and while my, my glory pass by, that I will put you in a cleft of a rock, and I will cover you with the hand until I have passed by, and I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back, by, um, but my face is not to be seen. Now I want to I bring an understanding to the scripture to you, because all you can hear is, I can't see the face of God, and you've been preaching that I can't see the face of God, but this is the evidence in my subconscious that say you cannot see the face of God. I have to explain to you something, that Yahweh uh, is talking about an ungenerated, unregenerated nation. Amen. It's an unregenerated nation that has been in sin, that has been living in slavery, yeah. that has literally the folds of another nation on them. Yeah. They have not decided in all of their fullness to go to Him. They have been dragged out of a, 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 a mentality of slavery into freedom, but they didn't really want it. They even complained and said to Moses, we were eating fish and having a good time. Did you drag us out into the wilderness to kill us? Come on. <laughs> but same, if you go study the original, 
He never says, you can't see my face. Let's just carry on quickly. Which shows that there is, uh, that while there are aspects of God's nature that are revealed to Moses, his, uh, his name, which is his back. Yeah. Come on. So God reveals to Moses all his names and the fullness of who he is in his name by showing him his back. Mm -hmm. It wasn't per se that. Yeah. Because let me just quickly explain something to you. If you are in the spirit, you don't just see in front of you. Come on. You see 360 degrees. Yeah. All right. And of course, the father, according to history, according to tradition, according to the Hebraic belief, has four faces. All right. And they're not all next to each other. They show all around him. You guys can <laughs> there are other aspects that are not manifested. His glory, his face. Mm. So that God's glory exists prior to uh, and apart from any manifestation of it. Meaning that only through the blood of Yeshua and uh, the, the, the repentance of intimacy. Now I want you to understand that statement. Moses had a relationship with Yahweh so much so that the nation that he was leading into the promised land couldn't fathom. Could not. Matter of fact, when he started talking to God, they ran. Yeah. Because it was just mind-blowing. I mean, him, him and God are having a conversation, and he said, no, dude, they're your people. Your people. Okay. And God said, no, dude, they're your people. <laughs> you have to be kind of close to someone to have a conversation like that. Yes. He has spoken to him before. He has spent time with him before. There was an a, a intimacy that goes beyond law and rule. All right. That's right. I, I need you to understand that. Right. Because of intimacy, David could do what was unlawful. Mm -hmm. right. Because he was a worshiper. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you want to be, if you want to take, uh, if you want to become, if you want the, the, the father to become. Put it in, put it in your hands. Worship him. Yeah. Love on him. Mm. Eat of him. Drink of him. And he'll give you anything and everything you want. Mm. Because that's his desire. That's the only reason he created us. It's to worship him. Yeah. To love him. And, and, and that subsides almost all rules. Yeah. But and I understand. I can't have adultery in my life and worship him in fullness. All right. That's not going to happen. Not going to happen. It's impossible. As a matter of fact, it's not possible. Right. Because right. then I'm not worshipping in fullness. Mm -hmm. But when I do worship Him in fullness, when I have an intimacy with Him that goes beyond the natural, I step into a place where I cannot sin. Supernatural. And it's beyond what the blood did. But the blood did everything. And right. I want to remind you, Moses through intimacy stepped into what was already done. All right. Same as Moses, same as Enoch, because this lamb was slain before the foundation of the earth. I have to remind you of that because we forget that. And intimacy is what opens that time gate. Woo! Yeah. Intimacy Woo. opens that time gate for me to go into that place where the blood has already been shed mm. and sins have already been forgiven. That's why Moses could see him face to face and live. That's why Moses could spend literally 40 days in him. In the kingdom of heaven, in its full capacity, and bring that glory back to such an extent that he could burn gold to powder. Mm. So imagine if we are the burning ones walking the earth. <laughs> yes, Lord. Now, of course, we always and have always seen the Old Testament as symbolic. It's not always symbolic. Because the miracles that take place, they wasn't symbolic. Literal. It was all literal. And every miracle that's spoken of happened. All right. And we can't even begin to fathom the things that happened in the Old Testament. That's right. But if you study the history of the Hebraic nation, if you study what they went through and what they've seen, and the power that God carried with and through them, if you understand that Moses wrote the first five books yeah. via what he saw, what he saw. In those 40 days. Yeah. What he saw. 
in 40 days, he went back into a, a lifetime of things to such detail that we can read it in the Bible from Genesis 1 to where he finishes with his five books and we are in awe of what he's seen because he wrote it in such detail as if it was someone else writing. Yeah. It's like, but, but, but Adam was supposed to write that because who else could have seen that? That's right. Who else could have walked there? Who else could have seen that? Mm. But Moses went into the glory because when you're in the glory, there's no time and space. All right. That's why everything is instantly revealed. That's why when we begin to live in that place, that's, that, that everything changes. All right. Because if I live in the glory, I create my tomorrow. Mm. I create my tomorrow according to my scroll and according to His perfect will. Thank you. I have the ability in His glory to literally walk the earth with no demonic influence at all. And wherever I put my foot, that place belongs to me. Yeah. Which means everywhere I go, every demonic influence, every demonic word, every demonic curse, every form of demonic is dealt, judged. Come on. Can we begin to see this stuff? Yeah. All right. I know it sounds a little bit far-fetched, but why don't you just go read your Bible? Don't let a man read it for you. You go read it yourself. Take it into the Spirit. Mm. Meditate on it. Yeah. Matter of fact, let's take meditation back. That's right. It was always ours. That's right. Someone else just took it for its pure form. Because we scafaffle. Do you guys know what scafaffle means? Yeah, we screwed it up. <laughs> so we meditate a little bit and we expect a lot. Mm. But the Buddhist will meditate a lot and expect a little, yet he gets everything. <laughs> mm. Because that's what they do, that's all they do. There's a, a place called Skellig Mike Michael. Skellig Michael. It's an island in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Now, I'm not too sure whether these were Christian monks or just Buddhist monks, but I believe they were Christian monks. And as I listened to Grant Moni share this testimony, I believe that they were Christians. It's the same with, with St. Patrick. Uh, there was just things that they did that was beyond the natural. For example, they get into a boat and let the ocean take into a place. And a specific amount of these monks landed on this island where it was just one big rock. But if you go there today, there's about 700 steps that goes up, carved out of rock. And then and there is a complete, it looks like someone was living there for many years. I don't know if there's anyone living there now, but uh, it was built, everything was built out of the rock. And he, they would find that uh, they, they, they built everything by thought. They carved out everything by thought. They never went down the stairs lest their faith were weak. And when their faith were not weak, which is most of the time, they would just think that they're downstairs and they'll be down because they have to catch fish. That's the only thing they could eat there because nothing grows on the rock. You know, the, the deist cry is a prayer prayed by St. Patrick. And uh, what would happen is <clears throat> the king's men would try and kill him because he was a great man of God doing great things in the kingdom. And uh, they would wait for him as him and his, his, uh, his men walk through, through the, the, the field or the woods. And the Lord would warn him that they are waiting for him. And him, he would turn into a deer. Literally, his physical body would turn into an animal, All right. and his uh, men would turn into thorns. And they would walk right by the king's men, and they would go back into their normal form. <laughs> now, we have seen this in the African culture, where a witch doctor could turn into a werewolf, or a witch doctor could turn into a, a hyena, or a, a dog. It happens all the time. Just like, and I said it before, the witches would fly. 
Matter of fact, there's an a African nation where there's a law stating that witches are not allowed to fly higher than 30 meters, which is about 90 feet. Mm. It's a law. I, I have a newspaper clip on my Facebook. If you ever go on there, you'll find it somewhere. Newspaper clip stating that witches are not allowed to fly higher than 30, uh, kilometer, uh, 30, 30 meters in the air. Where do we, we, we can't even begin to fathom any of that stuff. <laughs> but as we begin to walk in the glory, as we allow um, ourselves by the Spirit to go back and take the crown of glory that the enemy has taken, because let me tell you, I look at these men of old, I look at Moses, and I look at the sons of, of glory, I look at all these phenomenal men that was in the world, even Paul and his disciples and those who were under Christ, what they did and what they went through, the lives that they lived. I look at John, and as far as we know, John, was uh, there was no record of his death. He might still be alive. Come on. He might do the same as Enoch, in and out, in and out, in and out. We have lost our crowns of glory because we walk on the earth and yes, we operate in the gifts. And the gifts are powerful and awesome, but if there's more than the gifts, then why do we just want the gifts? Come on. If the fullness of His glory is available for me in the Spirit, then there's a crown that I can place on my head and lay down before the throne of the Father so that I can walk in that fullness, then it's my responsibility to take it up and to run with it. Right? Amen. Yeah. No. See, this glory reminds me of His omnipresence. Because when I'm close in it, I'm continuously aware of Him. All right. I'm always aware of Him because His presence is in me and over me and around me. And if I might for one second forget that His glory and presence are on me, it's visible for those around me. What is it about you? Yeah. Why are you always smiling? Why are you always happy? Why do I never see you sad or depressed? Mm -hmm. What is it with you? What is it that I see when I look at you? Why are you always so peaceful? I remind you again that God doesn't have to go anywhere. He's omnipresent. Yes. He is everywhere. <sighs> Just allow him to, to express himself to you. love you so much, Lord. You are so awesome, majestic, beautiful. See, this crown of glory reminds you that when you're discouraged, His presence will see you through. When you're in darkness, it has to, it brings light. It brings the fullness of the light. But when I've lost my crown, I'll be in a place of darkness. But I can take it back. Thank you. When things don't make sense and you can't understand anything, just recognize that God is present. That's that crown of glory. While you can't see through the darkness, He can. See, it's a, it's a dimension of your sight that is placed in the natural so you can see through that which the enemy brings. It's when you feel lonely that you're reminded that you're not because of His presence and His glory. Yes. Huh? Right. <laughs> See, with His glory you can take a walk in Jesus. You read a book, a book in Jesus. You, you, you pray in Him. You do everything in Him. As a matter of fact, your entire life is in Him because of the glory in and over you. Yeah. Because I've realized in my life I am constantly aware of being in Him. Because that's where His glory is. Are you guys okay? Yes. 
when you're worried, His presence calms you down. And I remind you, the crown of glory brings you to a place of remembrance that He is always with you. See, I have, uh, over the last couple of months, the Father has opened my eyes again and again and again in different dimensions. I don't, even, I don't even talk about everything because, again, I don't understand all these things. But I'm in the process of receiving revelation with the keys, the four keys the Father gave me. It took me six months mm. to get full revelation of it. And, of course, now that we've given out all the keys and the porthole and the windows open, what now? Yeah. So there's another dimension of revelation that needs to be poured into us so we can understand what is to happen. How are we to direct this into place so that everything that needs to come in, comes in. Yeah. But see, the enemy will do everything in his power. Because one of the things he does is he makes this stuff sound so crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Now if it sounds crazy to me, I imagine how crazy it sounds to you. All right. All right. And to the religious. And of course, this stuff's on YouTube, so everyone listens to it. Uh, and imagine how crazy it sounds to the world. Yeah. And me thinking, well, you know, who am I to have received this, and who am I to do this stuff? Now, I don't think like that anymore, but there's such a, it's, it's so easy to think like that. Yeah. It's so easy for your, your flesh to take over and the enemy to come in and take the crown of glory. Mm. Because if he can take your, your faith and believe away and make you shift your, 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 your paradigm to a different place. Come on. Then all of a sudden, that which is right in front of you, you don't take. Don't take it. Because your focus is on something else. Yeah. So his desire is literally for his sons and daughters to continuously be in that place where I'm directly in him. Yeah. Where every time, now I need you to begin to understand that if the enemy has taken this crown from you, then it is your responsibility, like we did last week, and I think we'll probably do this every week, to go back in. Mm -hmm. To find that place where he took it, and to deal with it. To make sure that it is your responsibility to go find the crown of glory, because it's something that's visible in your life. Now, it might be because of lack of intimacy. It might, now, I don't want to make this about works, because right. there's different types of works, right? That's right. The works we're talking about is intimacy, loving Him, worshipping Him, going to the Word, studying the Word. Mm -hmm. Then you get another dimension of works, which is just an attitude. Doing things to please Him. All right. That's the works that's like filthy rags before Him. It's, a, it's like everything else. It's all about attitude. It's all about what is your motive. Motive. You know, I don't worship Him and love Him and glorify Him so that I can be wealthy financially. I don't uh, go to meetings so that I can take up an offering. I, and, and there's always, always in the motive. Yeah. You have to understand the Father's desire for you is to love Him and to worship Him, to glorify and to magnify Him. Yeah. I know this sounds very selfish, but... Deal with it. I have most of the time come to these meetings because I get so much out of it. Come on. But I don't care if there's a hundred people or fifty people or ten people. Yeah. Because in the first place, what I minister over the region, but secondly, every time I teach this, I get something new. Come on. Imagine how much more every time you hear it, you can get something. Get something. And then new. soon you'll be teaching it. Yeah. And every time you teach it, you're going to be getting something out of it. Come on, that's good. See, you yes. cannot sit here and say, oh, well, I, this is, I just, it's just for me to receive. No, it's not. This is for you to go and share with everyone you meet. All right. Huh. Amen. Of course, it's for the church, for the ecclesia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys okay? Yes. It's very important for you to practice His presence, to right. practice the fullness of His glory daily. How do I make this real in my life? How can you take this from the realm of theory and let it be transformed into your life? Continuously think of His presence. This is something you have to do. And I, for a very long time in my life, I used to set my alarm for every 10 minutes. And all my alarm said was, pray in spirit. 
So for 365 days, every day, every 10 minutes, all through the day, even through the night, my alarm would go off. I never switched it off. It was, it was snooze, permanent sweet snooze. And every 10 minutes, your phone snoozes. And I got so good at it that I would switch it off in my sleep without waking anybody up. I would know it's going to go off. And I would still have a good night's rest, but I was always praying in tongues. All right. And it got me to that place in my life where I was so aware of the Spirit because I was always praying Amen. tongues. Amen. And if that's what you need to do, then that's what you need to go do. Then, of course, I switched a little bit, and what I then started doing is every single time I sat down, every time I stood up, every time I put a shirt on, every time I put my pants on, or shoes on, or socks on, every time I walk in a door or out of a door, every time I get into my car or climb out of my car, I am constantly aware. I'm climbing into Him, out of Him, going into the Spirit, coming out of the Spirit. Uh, when I'm in the shower, I'm getting showered by His glory. It's just a constant awareness of what... He's doing in my life, the presence. presence. And I've noticed in my life that it's constantly bringing me closer and deeper into Him. Amen. I mean, I sit in my, in my house in very early mornings, and I, 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 in the, if I'm in the flesh, I would begin to think that there's something seriously wrong with me because there's movement in the house all the time mm -hmm. because the two kingdoms are meeting. Yeah. I mean, uh, just the other day, um, as I, I was sitting down, I was looking towards our bathroom, and the lights were off, but I saw a physical figure walking from out of the room, and as I looked up, it kind of ducked. So I thought it was one of my sons. So I get up, and I walked around to look and see it, and, and there was nothing there. Now, if you know the angelic realm, you'll begin to realize that some of them are very funny characters. They're very playful. They're very cute. Not all of them, but most of them. And they love us. They enjoy spending time with us. Now what I've been starting to do in my, in my house, I would see something and I'd say, Hey, how are you doing? Mm. I know how cuckoo that sounds. Matter of fact, I am afraid, and not really afraid, but you know, just saying it out loud made me think, well, I might end up in some institution. <laughs> if the wrong people hear me, but I do that all the time now because this is becoming so real to me. All right. And of course, I'm just at the very mild place, just, just touching what I believe I'm going to step into a fullness and where it's becoming so real in, in sight that, that this is second to what I see in the Spirit. Yes. But it's the crown of glory. I truly believe it's the crown of glory that brings you to that place. All right. You need to stop several times a day and just be quiet. And that's not difficult. But you have to choose it. And if you have to set your phone at that place, you don't have to set your phone to remind you to pray, but set your phone to remind you maybe every hour, maybe every two hours. Set an alarm up that reminds you to just be quiet. Yeah. Just sit in His presence. Yes. Just allow Him to minister to you. Yes. The Word of God tells us to be still and know I'm God. Read and meditate on these Psalms over and over again. Have a quiet time with God where you look into His face. Tell yourself that God is present. Let me tell you something. This intimate time that I spend with God in the mornings is the most precious to me. Amen. Matter of fact, I have not in any meeting I've ever been in experienced His glory and His presence to such an extent as what I do in the mornings when I spend time with Him. Yeah. And sometimes, most of the time, I can't wait to go to sleep so that I can wake up and spend time with Him. Right. Although I'm spending time with Him all day long, and even when I'm with my family and it's chaotic in my house. <laughs> I've got a 10-year-old, a 9-year-old, a 3-year-old, and a 2-year-old. Oh yeah. It's all over the place. If yeah. we're not cleaning, that's what we do all day. We clean all day while we try, it doesn't help. Mm. There's always something on the floor, messed on the floor. Then we, while you're cleaning this mess, someone else is making a mess on that side. It's just... It's chaotic, but even in that mess, yeah. we're, I'm constantly engaging with the Father. My, my wife are constantly talking about things. She dreams a lot of dreams. She shares with me the dreams. We try and interpret the dreams. We're always busy with the things of God. Amen. And in between all that, there'll be an argument every now and then. Even in real. <laughs> Make sure you're carrying a consistent conversation with God. Yeah. Not sometimes, all the time. Just talk to Him. 
All right. And I remember once uh, saying to a friend of mine, and I made it very clear to him, I said to him, stop reading your Bible. Now, don't, this is not a, a law. I no. said it to him specifically because of his religious perception regarding the Bible and his irritating religious perception regarding praying. Mm -hmm. So I said, what you need to do, bro, is you need to stop reading the Bible and you need to stop praying. Yeah. Now, in any congregation, that's an abomination. <laughs> right? Can you just imagine what can be said after that statement? Oh, 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 Jesus. But what I meant to say to him is, dude, you need to stop praying. The way you pray is religious and I hate it. All right. He's not your genie. Come on. You know, he's not just there for your sins. It might look good on the outside, but he wants more than just you confessing your sins to him. He wants a little bit. No, it sounds good because I talk to him. And the more I sin, the more I talk to him. Wow, so what am yeah. I going to do? I'm going to sin more. Because the subconsciously you're thinking, well, I talk to him when I sin. When I don't sin, I don't really need him. Because that's the only point of conversation I have with him. Wow. And if I don't have needs, then I'm never going to talk to him. So if he supplies my needs, like he says in his words, then we're never going to talk. <laughs> so we're doing the two things he's already set me free from. Because he says all my needs are supplied and my sins are forgiven. Between those two things already given to me, we can't have a conversation. Yeah. That's our perception. So if I begin to walk outside of those two things and start talking to him, so I said to him, listen, buddy, go take out your favorite movie. Yeah. And I made it very clear. No pornography. No pornography. That's not going to work. Right. Yeah. So I said, your own, your very favorite movie, whatever it is, and, 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 and invite him with you. Uh-huh. And tell him about the movie. All right. Tell him about the movie and how much you enjoy it. He's not afraid of the stuff. All right. But it changes my perception regarding my prayer life. Yes. Because all I can do is forgive my sins and meet my needs. But then I start talking to him like I would talk to a friend of mine. Yeah. And everything changes. It starts to build a different uh, angle of relationship. Yeah. And that's what I was trying to get across. And I said, stop reading the Bible because you read it religiously and it makes no, brings no life to you. Rather take that which you already have inside of you and go meditate on it. All right. Let the word in you become alive. Yeah, come alive. Stop taking in the word and quoting it religiously. It has no value. Yeah, it brings yeah. no life. That's right. It's what becomes alive on the inside of me that creates the sword that destroys the works of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Exciting, isn't it? Amen. Talk to God about everything and fellowship with Him just as you would with a friend. Share with Him your fears and your joys. Develop the spirit of praise. It's constantly in praise. Constantly in worship. Thank Him for everything. Yeah. Uh, please, when you, when you have some sickness and disease, don't thank Him for the sickness and disease. It doesn't come from Him. Thank Him for the healing. The healing. Right? That's just, that's just logic stuff, right? Amen. That's right. <laughs> when you begin to praise Him, He reveals Himself to you. This is just to, to have His presence continuously around you and with you. I'm not even talking about physically going into the kingdom of heaven. I'm just talking about a dimension where my soul and my body is actively involved uh, regarding His presence. Because I'm not in the spirit the whole time, but I want my soul and my body involved with what my spirit's doing. And if my spirit's with the Father all the time, spending time with Him, my soul has no clue what my spirit's doing. But when my soul is engaging with the Father during the day, and my body is engaging with the Father through praise, then it will affect that which my spirit pours into my soul. And the revelation that my soul gets regarding what my spirit's putting in. Amen. Creates an awareness. This good creates an awareness. You guys okay? Yeah. I'm going to close with this now. We're going to quickly go through just reminding you what to do. You need to recognize the place where you lost the crown of glory. All right. You have had it because it's given to you at the date of birth. Come on. You do this by memory recall, thinking uh, what it was like then, what it was like for you as a son of God, as a daughter of God, to walk in that fullness, in that glory, yeah. in that presence where you continuously have it over you. Then 
remember that and say, what happened? What was the circumstances that occurred that allowed you to uh, remove this from your life? Sin. Now this happens daily. This is a daily fight. Maybe not for all, but for some. And go back, spend time in prayer in the Spirit, finding the place that you dropped it. Go back into your memory. Allow yourself to go back in to the spirit realm where you lost it so you can get it back. Either man took it from you or your sin took it. And the, the enemy immediately takes it and runs with it. All right. I have the ability to go back and take it. Repent. You are the one that lost your crown. You are the one that needs to own up to it. Repent for losing it. Then get it back. Amen. You guys okay? Yeah. You need to restore it by faith, which means praying something like, Father, by faith today I take hold of that crown that was removed from my head in that circumstances. Mm. Thank you. You need to refer, reaffirm by prayer the restoration of that crown. Father, thank you for the crown uh, of glory in my life. Yes. And then you obviously have to start meditating on there that which will, it, how it would be like if you have it fully restored. Amen. And let me tell you, if you've never had it, you need to start meditating on what it would be like for you to have it again. Oh. Because obviously you had it in the agreement that you signed before you came into the earth. That's good. You need to rebuild what you had. Works. Exciting, isn't it? Let's stand. You guys okay? Yeah. Yeah. Father, right now in the name of Yeshua, we want to go into the spirit realm. I want you to find yourself there. I want you to go in and start taking back what the enemy has stolen. This glory is what we need. The fullness of His glory. Now, I need you to understand, it's something you can close yourself in. It's a dimension of Yahweh that I bring back. It's not something that I get you on earth. It's something I have to go fetch in the kingdom of heaven and I bring that back because I close myself in it. That's why I go back every day. That's why I go in there as often as possible because I go in and I, I give it out. I go back in and I come back down and I share it. I give it to those around me. I'm consumed in His glory and His presence. That's why wherever I put my foot down, that place belongs to me. I take back dominion in its fullness by the glory of God. So, Father, right now we begin to just walk the earth in the Spirit, Father. We take back what the enemy has stolen. We take back that crown and we go, Father, and I want you to see yourself with the crown on your head. And I want you to go to the, th the foot of the Father's throne. And I want you to lay that crown down at His feet. Because when He takes that crown, it supplies the fullness of the glory of that crown to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And Father, that's what we do right now. This crown to be fully restored to the body of Christ in every area and dimension of our lives. Father, we love you, we praise you, we glorify you. I thank you that I can speak life over everyone in this room. I thank you that by your mercy and your grace and your fullness, we can stand as the fullness of Yahweh in the earth. Thank you. And walk like Moses did as he came out of your mountain. Lightning, fire, the fullness of your glory, carried by a son. I speak that over this region. I speak that into activation regarding everyone in this room. Let's walk in that, Father. We love you. We praise you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen.